Thank you, Jeff. Looks so shiny there in Peru. The glue from Peru holding it together. Thank you. Yeah, welcome to the last step. Frank is joining me from Zurich. He's bouncing around the world again, but he's back in his, his apartment in Zurich. Yeah, and today I just wanted to uh, share a bit where, where I've been at and yeah, have Frank uh, share his experiences. Yeah, we had this Birth of Holiness online retreat and it was quite amazing. We got some great reflections of how deeply it went. And I started thinking about this. Uh, I just put out a prayer recently to the community wide and it was to show me there's no loss. And it was as a result of watching this retreat and some of the stuff I've been looking at in my mind. And this idea of holiness, I remember in 12 Steps, they, uh, they tell you, don't, do not let spiritual terms deter you. And there was something about the word holiness that always, like, I just didn't like it. It was like, your holiness, or there was something with it that I just didn't like. And, but when I actually started to have an experience of what holiness was, that it's a state of mind and not something else, it completely retranslated it for me. And so this idea that, you know, I used to live in the addictions and everything, really it was just living in this world of lack, these lack thoughts and, you know, not having this idea that everything is provided. And so this prayer of show me there's no loss has been, has been going with me. And I had a few things that I wanted to read to kind of set it up. And one of the things is from many forms, one correction. It could be many forms of lack, one correction. And it says in here, there is, for there is but one mistake, the whole idea that loss is possible. This is just continually being presented to me that there's a possibility of loss. This one mistake in any form has one correction. There is no loss. To think there is, is a mistake. So I wanted to share this, uh, this thought that came to me the other day, my Christmas, my Christmas miracle. And, uh, it was funny, I wanted to start sharing about this. Me and Frank have been talking about expect miracles. You know, after my last online uh, morning show, I had talked about this holy encounter. I want to look forward to this holy encounter today with this guy, Michaela, I hadn't seen in two weeks. And then I walked out of the studio and I got a prompt to go for a walk. I went for a walk and ran into Mikel at the local Chevron. He was just there. I walked in in the middle of the store. I'm like, it's a Christmas miracle, Mikel. Like I hadn't seen him for two weeks. We've been waiting for him. He doesn't even live in this town. And it was like, it's this amazing thing. So, but the other part I wanted to share was this, this thought came to me. So I was going down to Salt Lake City the other day and leaving right around lunchtime. And I walked through the kitchen and Jess was preparing lunch and it was, uh, it was sweet potatoes and uh, sweet potatoes are my favorite. And I saw them and I said, oh, and she's like, what? I'm like, oh, I'm going to miss lunch today. I'm like, and then she said, oh, you really like sweet potatoes or something. And then the next thing was this rational. I was like, oh, I used to eat sweet potatoes every day. And then I caught myself. I'm like, look at this. Look where my mind goes with this idea, the missing out. Or, And in that moment, it was like, okay, let me let all this go and show me. Show me that this is not the truth, that I'm, there is any possibility of me missing out or any lack. And so we, you know, we, I let it go. And then literally a day or two later, Jess went to this place, which we get they provide food for churches and different things and you can go and kind of get stuff. And this was a day or two later that she comes back with, Hey Nicholas, cue the sweets with more sweet potatoes than I've ever seen in one place in my life. And I was like, as soon as I saw him, I was like blown away. I was like, Oh, sweet potatoes. And I told everyone like, this is the answer to my, my prayer. And you know, this is happening all the time. It's just a matter of whether I'm seeing it. So Jesus was being very playful and showing me, listen, you don't have to worry about the sweet potatoes. You can stay focused on your path. And, but it was like even other things. As soon as I saw that, I realized how much in my, my own mind that it was like. And then I remembered my sponsor, Big Book Bill, would give me a sweet potato pie for Christmas. And then as soon as I said it, Jess is like, oh, I'm inspired to make sweet potatoes. I'm like, now I get a sweet potato pie for Christmas. I was like literally being shown that there is, there is no loss. And it's like, I need these miracles to remind me that there isn't. And it's like, yeah, JC Central hooking it up with some, some sweet potatoes. So I really wanted to share that with you guys. And then like this idea of on the path. So I wanted to read this other little paragraph. And it's from chapter 29, The Coming of the Guest. 
why does an easy path, doesn't seem so easy all the time, but why does an easy path so clearly marked it is impossible to lose the way seem thorny, rough, and far too difficult for you to follow? Is it not because you see it as the road to hell? Instead of looking on it as a simple way, without a sacrifice, without a sacrifice or any loss, to find yourself in heaven and in God, until you realize you give up nothing, until you understand there is no loss, you will have some regrets about the way you have chosen, and you will not see the many gains your choice has offered you. Yet though you do not see them, they are there. This is this idea that the miracles are all around. I am being provided for to make that a constant prayer. And it's funny when I read this line now, this part of uh, until you understand there's no loss. I had this experience. It was about a year ago when I went back home or maybe two years ago now. Time seems to pass so quickly. And I went to a 12-step meeting, and it was a Came to Believe meeting on Friday afternoons. And it used to be one of my favorite spots to go because it was right near the Whole Foods. And it's just a beautiful uh, room that we had the meeting in. And I just liked that idea. Came to Believe in the 12 steps is Came to Believe that a power greater than myself can restore me to sanity. And the insanity is the belief that there's loss. So I just need to be restored to this wholeness of mind. And I remember I went home and I, it was one of the meetings I went to and one of my old sponsors was there and we, he asked me to go out to Whole Foods after, which I never refuse. And so we were sitting there with him and another guy and when he was explaining, trying to explain to his friend my path, he was like, yeah, he's been, you know, doing this. And when he actually said the words, he's given up so much, I remember being there like actually realizing that I haven't given up anything. I was like, and I didn't say it to him at the time, and it might have been intuitively that I didn't think he'd understand, or maybe I wanted him to think that I gave up a lot of stuff. I, I can't speak to that in this moment, but it was, I remember the feeling like, no, I'm not, I'm not giving up anything, an old job or whatever it was that I had seemed to let go of in the world. It just wasn't the truth for me. And when I read that, it really reminds me of it. And then the last thing before we get Frank to share some of his stuff is I wanted to read this one line which is from the characteristics of God's teachers and the development of trust. And it's amazing how often I'll be praying or anything and when I'm thinking of a certain topic, always something from this section comes to me. It's like over and over it's back to, to this section. So in this section he's talking about, you know, a period, between the period of sorting out and the period of relinquishment. Sometimes we, we have a period of overlap, and it says the teacher of God feels called upon to sacrifice his own best interests on behalf of truth. He has not yet realized how wholly impossible such a demand would be. He can learn this only as he actually does give up the valueless. Through this, he learns that where he anticipated grief, he finds a happy lightheartedness instead. Where he, where he thought something was asked of him, he finds a gift bestowed on him. Yeah, so I love that part, this reminder of, and so often I have that happen to me, where I, this anticipated situation or grief would come to me, and it's never the case. It's like letting go of that, that thought. So I just really wanted to start it off with those sections to get the uh, conversation started. And I know Frank has had a few experiences lately that that he's had where he experienced, thought he was experienced, he thought his whole house was gonna burn down. And so, how are we doing there, Frank? Yeah, yeah you know, I, when, when you just read that, it is, it's, I can really resonates that the teacher of God thinks that uh, he has to give up something, ah, you know, and I guess it's, it's good to, to hear that, you know, we probably all do that. And that uh, awakening is, um, is uh, I mean, for me, the, the idea that awakening is associated with sacrifice. You know, and I'm, I'm learning that it's not like that. And, you know, I have some very, um, I mean, I, I have incredible uh, experiences of that. And you were just mentioning, and I, we, we talked about it in a, in a previous show, but, you know, 
the whole of uh, my whole mountain was burning in my ranch and the horse, some of the horses were left there. And I was, you know, I was in Mallorca with Lisa watching it on the computer as the map, you know, they had posted a map, uh, the fire department and, you know, the red was coming in and, and, and said, okay, that's it. You know, it was taken and the whole, and, and I completely let go of it, you know, and the whole um, mountain burnt. And people went up there and they said, the whole mountain is burnt. It's like a moon landscape. And on top, there's a green little oasis and it's your ranch. And it didn't burn. And none of the horse, you know, the horses that stayed there were, were safe. Not even a chicken died in it. You know, not, not, it was unbelievable. And it was an inferno. It was all over the news. And we were right in the midst of it. You know, and um, when we were in Holland, uh, uh, you know, David was, was talking about it. And he said, you know, this is not because God says, oh, I like Frank, you know, and I'm going to save his ranch. But it's, it was, you know, that letting go and this gentleness of spirit saying, you know, there is no loss. But what happens is now the situation is that I do have to move away from there. But I had been thinking about it before. Uh, and now it's, you know, okay, all your stuff is still there. But now it's time to move on, you know, because mm. uh, you can't go back there. And so it's very gentle. And before that, there was the story with the storm that hit, you know, and my boat was the only one that survived the storm because I had, I had tightened the chain before and all the other boats were on the rocks, you know. And why did I tighten the chain? You know, I just acted on a. We talked about it and I acted on, oh, let's just call the diver. You know, so all these things, you know. And, um, and so now we're with the, with the Mallorca story, uh, we had found a place that I really thought was great. And we already had talked about it and everybody knew about it. And, you know, we talked about it uh, at, at the retreats and, and it didn't happen, you know, and David said, you know, that place is out, there's way too many problems. And so we went to see another place. So, so I went back with Lisa and we, we started watching, uh, uh, l looking for other places. And there was one of them. And I thought I kind of liked this one, but not so much. But, you know, I put it on the list. And then the people were being difficult for showing it. And they said, you know, we already have it sold. We don't want to waste time. And my pride was saying, okay, screw you. Then, you know, I, I'm not, you know, we're not going. So we ended up there anyway. And it was the place, you know, it, we, Lisa and I, we said, this is it. And the person that I thought was such a pain in the butt was the nicest. <laughs> you know, she was, actually, I thought it was going to be an old woman. She was like this 35-year-old horse person, you know, who um, reminded me a lot of my daughter. You know, she had the same kind of, you know, halfway dressed in, in horse, you know, they always like with riding pants and, 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 uh, but but they wore slippers and you know, <laughs> you know in, in between, and so uh, I could see the whole vibe. And then I told her what I did with the horses, and she was so into it because I do this, you know, thing uh, with, with you know my the training. And and she was said, I want a natural. Uh, I've been dreaming my whole life for a natural um, uh, horseman trainer. And I said, you know, I learned this for twenty five years with. Bug Branneman, you know, that we have the movie on the, on the movie, you get watcher guide. And so uh, she's, Oh, I want you guys, I want you to have the house. And then in the meantime, we have David is in Mexico and we have him on, on, you know, on Skype and we show him, you know, Lord, uh, and, and he was, everybody was, and Lisa was excited. Oh, this is the place. This is the place. <laughs> and the girl was jumping behind us. Yeah, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. And then, she says, but I have to ask my parents because it was a family thing and it's very Mallorquin, you know, it's family. And they were very rural type people, you know, who um, is sort of not at all from our world. So we take, they take us to the mother. I'm trying to make this short, but it's, a, it's an amazing story. So we go over there. This woman, you know, with her apron, she sits us down, makes sausages that she made herself and stuff. And then she asks me, what, what is it that you do? So I explain it to her in Spanish. And she looks at Kina, her daughter, and said, you know, that reminds me of, what was his name? David, David Hoff, Hoff Hoffmeister? <laughs> and Lisa and I, we scream, say, what? How do you know him? And, and so, so we called David and we said, 
David, do you recognize this house? He said, yes, this is where I gave my retreat 10 years ago. I mean, what are the chances, you know? So, you know, this, this, you know, I always ask, make it obvious. And so the thing, what, what came in now is that, you know, I was always thinking when I joined the community, uh, uh, I, or, you know, living miracles, life is going to get really boring because everybody <laughs> sits on the computer. They talk about the community all day. And I really am not into it at all, you know, and how boring. So even the house is, this is a nice house, but what am I going to do there all day? So then the girl asks me to, to <laughs> you know, I think the, the elders are going to come. They're going to be in their rooms, you know. I'm, I'm going to go, I want to go out for lunch. They're not going to want to go. It's like, you know, I had this whole thing. And what am I going to do for Christmas? I have to go to Zurich. And so I thought I was going to be alone for Christmas. Now David is coming back to New York. I'm going to spend Christmas with David, you know, David and Lisa. But the other thing is that then the girl said, come to my barn. Because she runs a barn. She's actually a professional. And then I said to Lisa, I want to go... Uh, you know, I want to go train horses with her. And Lisa said, I've never seen you that sparked up, you know, and that happy. And, and Lisa came with us and she said, you know what? I've never seen you like this. You were so focused and you're doing there exactly what I'm doing with you because your mind is always wandering. But you, when you were there, you were honing in the horses. You were honing in the girls that were watching. And I was, you know, it's like I'm totally into it. It's my joy and she's never seen me this joyous. So really what I'm trying to say, I thought I'd give up the horses and sit you know, on a computer, people on a computer all day. You know, and it was like when I came to see your house in Mexico and you said, in this chair, I did a lot of writing. I said, oh my God, I'm going to have to sit in this chair all day. You know, now, and then we did, <laughs> and we write the big book or something. And then, and then, uh, you know, we have this show and it's so much fun mm. to do the show. And, you know, it's never, there hasn't been any loss at all is, is, is the story. And right, before you, you go on, I want to show this picture so we don't lose it. Yeah, yeah. We have a picture of uh, Frank with the horses when he went down in yeah. Mallorca. <laughs> and as soon as I saw it, it was, uh, it was amazing. Oh, yeah, it's got these little orbs all yeah. over the place. I've seen these pictures in the past, certain ones where these orbs show up. I'm like, Frank, you're surrounded by angels. I'm yeah. like, it's the most beautiful picture, just seeing him in his element. <clears throat> and like you said, you know, it's, it's always individualized. Where we perceive grief or we think that we're going to have to do something. It was the same for me. I was like, I'm going to have to do this or do that. And then I never knew what I actually was going to do. And now I build a studio and all this stuff that's provided for me to show me exactly what you're saying. There's no loss. But something else that you said really stuck out to me when you saw this um, quinoa or quinoa? <laughs> quinoa. Quina, quina. quinoa is the, the other thing. <laughs> that she reminded you of something. That's another part that actually comes back to me so often is the belief that I'm going to lose these relationships. And that's something I just was sharing recently in this prayer was, you know, even with this rela the relationships I have with my brother and family and, you know, stepping further out and maybe even making my residency out here in Utah and seeing that it'd be letting go of a part of my mind, that there's a safety in it. And then I realized that I actually see these people. I see my brother recently, Greg is uh, going down to Mexico and I've been seeing my brother in him so much lately. It's like some of his expressions and it's amazing. And I always picture Greg as this, he's got such patience and I always picture my brother as the opposite <laughs> with me, of yeah. course, because I was very hard to deal with for a couple of decades. but. <laughs> When I get to see that in others, and like even with Susanna, I, I literally see some of my best friends. I see Bigger B, my, my buddy Bigger B One Love, certain expressions she makes and everything. I actually, I feel like they're still here. I don't feel like I've lost any of those connections. Even if you saw the show that I had the time with, with Kirsten, where, where, you know, she reminded me or I reminded her of her brother. And it's like these ones come back to us and there's... Yeah, there's never an experience that I'm letting go of anyone, you know. I do have to let it go in my mind and then it comes back like this experience that it's hard to explain, like until you feel that wholeness of mind and let go of the idea that I do, 
that one mistake until I correct that mistake over and over. You even had it with the show, you said. You're like, you were expecting the grief with the show and the loss, like, oh, you're having Kirsten on and these ones and I'm not going to be on the show and because you were traveling. And then, of course, each time it's the opposite of what we think. It's like JC Central's like, no, look, look, that's not the case. That's not the case with the boat, with the house, with the this, with the sweet potatoes, with all of it. It's just like this pouring, you feel that song, I feel it pouring down and it's like, we need these miracles to remind us and that's why we share them is so that we can keep them in our awareness so that we can continue and not think that there will be loss each time that, you know, now I'm going to spend Christmas alone and you said, oh, Lisa and David are here and now you're having like <laughs> the most amazing opportunity for Christmas, probably with the same people as well, so. Yeah, yeah, and we're fly I'm flying in for Christmas, and then on the 23rd, I'm doing a workshop at the horse place. So it's, you know, it's just, woo, you know, exactly not what I, uh, um, but you know, there is, uh, when I, uh, since I am in this, it's like almost like a vortex, that there are things that are seeming to disappear, you know, and that's the scary part. And I think mm. that's where it ties into that what you read, that people then feel, oh my God, my, my world is, is, is being, you know, pulled out from under me. And then, uh, and then you realize, you know, once you're open uh, to seeing your miracles, you realize that not at all, it's being actually enriched. Mm. But, you know, I have, I still have the grief of, you know, having let go of Emma. And so I feel like that has been removed from me. And, um, and so, you know, no, but, but I just have to remember these stories and, and it was good. You know, it started with the boat and you kept saying, you know, remember the story of the boat. And I, I share these stories, you know, in the 12 steps to tell people, you know, expect these miracles because uh, the prayer is let me see them. And they are there every day. And, and after a while, now I'm getting used to it, but there's these little things I think of someone and then they call or I see them and all this stuff, you know, in the beginning, I went, wow, wow, wow. And now I say, okay, it's a daily miracle occurrence, you know. And the little miracles um, appear every day, you know, just, just in people that you meet and that call you at the right moment. But uh, it's the big ones that are good, you know, to, to say, you know, just remember that you're perfectly safe. And I think this was the big miracle for me is was... Uh, you know, like spirit saying, yes, it seems like your world is shaking, but you are safe. And here's the proof, you know, mm. yeah, I'm just showing you that you're safe. Yeah, there's uh, there's another paragraph here, which I wasn't going to read, but I remember it now. And it's from that same chapter of the coming <clears throat> or chapter 29, which is the awakening and the coming of the guest. And when you were reading that or when you were saying that, I was saying I was thinking of the same thing. And it says, your guest has come. You asked him and he came. You did not hear him enter, for you did not wholly welcome him. And yet his gifts came with him. He has laid them at your feet and asks you now that you will look on them and take them for your own. He needs your help in giving them to all who would walk apart, believing they are separate and alone. They will be healed when you accept your gifts, because your guest will welcome everyone whose feet have touched the holy ground whereon you stand and where his gifts for them are laid. It like brings us back to this acceptance of it is all here and it's only this letting go that is all we talk about in the 12 steps and even in this path, it's like the continuous surrender over and over. and. Um, someone in the community sent me a, uh, <clears throat> a little video of Russell Brand, and he's just celebrating, I think, 13 or 16, or I forget how many years. And it was just him doing a little YouTube or a, a YouTube live and just sharing his gratitude for the path and those who have walked before him and just saying how, you know, where he was and where he is now and recognizing the gifts of, of those people. And that's really what our show's about you know, that we can share the steps we've taken, the ones that have gone before us, and we can actually, yeah, share that with everyone. And so, yeah, I'm always grateful when you share about these, uh, these stories, because I know sometimes it, it's not easy. You know, we're on a lot of calls that, 
you know, each time an idol falls, <laughs> we will weep each time an idol falls. And we certainly have made idols of a lot of things in our lives. And, but then we do come to this place where, oh my God, you say it falls away. It's that part where I, in the course where it's like, it's like a, to a toy that we don't use anymore. It's like, there's just no, we don't find any value in it. It's like, it literally falls away from our awareness. Like, oh, I don't think about that anymore. It's the same way with in 12 steps with alcohol and drugs, people are like, they don't, a sponsor will know at first, they'll be like, hey, you're doing so good, this and this. And I'm like, oh, I haven't thought about a drug or a drink in so long. And yeah, this tends to happen with the same thing. You know, you let go of seemingly horses or this, and then they're brought back into your awareness. And now you're doing a, a workshop, you know, from right near Christmas when you're going to be having, uh, you know, some time with Dave. And it's like, wow, these are the things that we'd never expect, you know, these things that we, we think we're letting go of, but we're really not. And then we have these symbols showing back up like, no, it's all, it's all good. Here's three boxes of sweet potatoes and a sweet potato pie. You know, nothing's going, nothing, you're not losing anything, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, and the gratitude is important because I have to admit, you know, I start taking things for granted really quick, you know, it's like, whoa, the miracle. And then after two days, yeah, you know. So, and this is why I think one of the things of our show is also, you know, that we have to expose all this stuff, you know, mm. we, we, and that's what we do. You know, that, that uh, yes, I'm really grateful, but I can tell you tomorrow I, I can wake up and say, hey, so what, you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And so, and, and this is, when, and once you know, I can, I can, uh, you know, I'm, I'm ready for the healing. I, I you know, uh, it's something, um, uh, Ricky said before, you know, do you want to really confront it or do you just want to feel comfortable? You know, that really resonated with me when she said that because that is really what we need to do um, is to look at the, to, to look at the fear in the face, you know, and, um, and then, and then let it go. And I think uh, the letting go is, is the hardest part, you know, because in that moment of letting go, there's an enormous amount of fear. It's like, whoa, no. You know, this crazy idea that if I, my ego lets go, you know, that's completely insane, that things are going to get out of control. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I see all these miracles. And the miracles are only there because I let go, because I allow the miracle to happen. And, and before that, I was so used to controlling everything that I couldn't, the, maybe the miracle was even there, but I couldn't see it, you know. And now I can see it. So when we pray for seeing the miracle, um, it, it is very powerful, mm. you know. That's beautiful. Yeah. Let's yeah. join yeah. in that prayer with everyone that, yeah, let's see those miracles. And as you were talking again, I just, this lesson 76 is I'm under no laws, but God's. And there's one line in there. It says, you will be listening to the one who says there is no loss under the laws of God. And it's like each time these thoughts return to us of it's going to be bad or there's going to be sacrifice. It's like we have each other and yeah, and that constant guest, our companion. So let's be a host to that and let's expect miracles and raise our awareness so that we can see them throughout this Christmas miracle season. And uh, we're about out of time, Frank, so maybe you can... Already? I think so, yeah. I like we just started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Yeah, so we'll Thank see you. you in in another week for another show well, before I, and if, uh, at the end of the show I'll do the meditation. Yes. Okay. Thank you so okay. much and we'll see you next week. Love you, Frank.